Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. It's so great to be back with you. I had a terrible cold and my voice disappeared, laryngitis and all the rest of it, which meant I couldn't record videos as much as I wanted to. But I'm back. I might have a little scratch in my throat. It is what it is. I'm just happy to be back and able to share everything that I had planned to share with you before I got sick. I'm going to do it now. So in this video, I am going to be talking to you about compliance interviews. And I'm going to go through three of the top questions that you might be asked in an interview so that you are armed and prepared to answer it well and stand out from the crowd and give put your best foot forward, basically. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. I know interviews are so stressful. Even when I used to go for interviews, it was one of those things I couldn't sleep the night before. My stomach would be in knots. No matter how good I got at compliance through the course of my career, interviews always made me nervous. But I realized over time that the more I practiced and was thoughtful about my answers in advance, the less nervous I felt and the most confident I felt. And these are the tips that I kind of want to share with you today to help you also feel a lot more confident and less nervous when you have to go for your interview for that role that you've been praying about and wishing for and hoping to get. So let's do this. Let's make sure we're dealing with those nerves. And remember, this is the top three questions that I think, you know, without a doubt, you should get asked in any typical compliance interview for any role, whether it's a compliance monitoring role, regulatory affairs manager role, you might need to tweak some of the answers a little bit to meet the and speak to the specific uh, skill set that is applicable. But in general, what I share with you is something that you should be apply, able to apply across any interview, um, regardless of the level as well, whether it's a senior position or a lower level position, the same kind of technique and um, formula should apply. So it's really great for everyone at the end of the day. So let's get rid of those nerves. Let's get you ready to answer these three questions and jump straight in. So the first question, tell us about yourself and why you want to work in compliance. This is the number one question. It's how you introduce yourself. And when I give you the tips and the interviews, I'm I mean, and the answers, I am assuming that at this point you've walked into the room, shaken hands and introduced yourself. But if you haven't, of course, please make sure that you add the introduction and say, hi, my name is Kutai in your answer. But if you've already gone through those formalities, then there's no need to repeat your name again in the response, okay? And the second tip, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure that you don't make the mistake of regurgitating your CV. It is absolutely unnecessary to start going through every job that you've ever been through and telling them about your experience. They have your CV. They've read it. They've invited you to the interview. They know you worked at three other places in your current role. So keep all of that to a minimum and focus on telling them who you are, the parts of you that aren't necessarily articulated in your interview. Um, let them know yourself. You're making your first impression. They're going to see if this is the type of person that they want, personality that they want to work with. And lastly, don't be afraid to show personality and who you are. If you're the type of person who's happy and smiles and answers and might giggle in the middle of a, an, an answer or throw in a little, you know, antidote, then feel free to do that. Obviously, don't make it into a joke and turn it into a thing, but, you know, be who you authentically are because people resonate with authenticity more than anything. The last thing you want to do is appear to be a robot, regurgitating rehearsed answers. No one relates to that. And even if you make a mistake, it's okay. Take a breath and say, sorry, I mixed up my words or I got tongue tied. I'm just gonna start that over again. And then compose yourself and answer the question you've been asked. We are all human beings. The recruiter is a human being. The hiring manager is a human being. 
we all understand that these are stressful circumstances and we're not going to necessarily be 100% perfect and articulate <clears throat> in the room. So give yourself some grace and just do the best that you can. Okay. So to answer the first question, tell us about yourself and why you want to work in this role. This is how I would answer that question. Remember, I've said, I'm assuming I've introduced yourself. Thank you for inviting me to, invi to interview for this role. I am so excited at the opportunity to be considered. At the very heart of it, I am a detail-oriented and analytical thinker. I love having the opportunity to learn about a subject matter, whether it's a regulation or an area of expertise like anti-money laundering, for example. I really love to drill down into that subject matter and learn as much as I can and understand it. But then this role also will then provide me with the opportunity to, not, to take that knowledge and apply it into a business context. It's really great to work with such a dynamic business as yours that has got multiple products and service offerings and take my skill set, my knowledge about anti-money laundering, data protection, whatever the case may be for the, in terms of the role you're interviewing for, or the, just the regulations as a whole that apply to this business and advise them and guide them in terms of achieving their specific goals and objectives. I'm really, really, really passionate about compliance and practicing compliance. And I think my natural abilities and skills lean heavily towards me being able to be successful in this role. As you know, I'm currently working as a regulatory risk manager for XYZ company. And that role has really given me the opportunity to grow my skills to the next level. And I think being able to work in your organization in this specific role of regulatory affairs manager will allow me to apply what I've learned in my career to date and be successful and move to the next level of my career. Okay, was that good? So great. So that is a typical answer that you can give. And like you see, I, like you heard, <coughs> excuse me, I've talked about myself as a human being. I've expressed my passion for the role. I've let them know why I'm interested in working for their organization and in that specific role. I've mentioned where I worked previously, where I work currently, but I haven't rattled on about, oh, my duties are, my responsibilities are, like I said, they're in my CV. If they require you to go into more depth about maybe a historical role that you had or your current role, then they can question you further on that. But I think the aim of your first response to that question off the bat should be, I want to tell you my core strengths. I want to tell you my, 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 my core skills. And I want to tell you who I am at the core of me and why I deserve to have this job. Okay, so keep that in mind as you prepare for your interview, and we're going to jump straight into the second question. Okay, question number two. We are going to look at what the question, what are the most important skills and competencies and qualities that you believe a compliance officer needs to have? very, very important question. And I think it's really important for you to be able to demonstrate your understanding of all that it takes that you need to be juggling in order to be successful in any compliance role. So my answer to this question would look something, would sound something like this. I believe that a compliance officer needs to have a very thorough, strong grasp of all the technical skills from risk assessment, risk identification, monitoring, change management, all those technical skills are skills that a compliance officer needs to have. But above and beyond that, a truly great compliance officer is one that also balances the technical skills and the soft skills, because the soft skills are what allows me to be able to execute my role effectively. And that's having the ability to do things such as engage with my stakeholders, manage their interests versus the client's interests, helping them to understand their obligations and finding ways to work through problems together, negotiation, communication, all of those are skills that are critical to the success of any compliance officer. So in, in essence, it's about having a balance between the technical skills 
and the soft skills that allow a compliance officer to be successful. But you also need to be the type of person who is very ethical and knows the difference between right or wrong and is able to stand up for that and to make decisions that are right and good for the business and aligned with the compliance expectations and not just lean heavily to being yes or doing whatever the business wants you to do. So you need to have a strong, sound background of ethics and integrity that you combine with your technical skills and your soft skills that enable you to work with people. And I think the combination of all of those are what make for a successful and competent compliance officer. So you see, those are the skills and you've expressed a well-rounded approach. It's not about highlighting only the soft skills. It's not about highlighting only the technical skills. You've spoken about your ethics and integrity, which are key components or qualities for a compliance officer. So you've managed to capture all of that in your response. So really, really think about it and say, you know, what are the expectations? And, you know, not only trying to pander to the crowd, but also what do you truly deep down believe is the right thing and the skills and the qualities that a compliance officer needs to be able to demonstrate in their role. Okay. All right. We are now going to jump straight through to the last question that I am going to take you through today. Let's check it out. Okay. Question number three, describe an opportunity at Describe a time that you faced a challenge and how did you overcome it? So this one is all about you having the ability to demonstrate your problem solving skills, how you take ownership of solving that problem, and then how you achieved a positive outcome. There's a technique called the STAR technique, which I'm sure you've heard about. Um, it's not something new and certainly not something I've invented, but it's basically a nice formula that you can use um, to answer this question. S is for situation. So describe the specific situation that you were in. It's not about talking about problem solving and taking ownership in general. We need a specific example. T is for the task. What was the task that you had to achieve or do that was actually problematic? A, what is the action that you took in order to um, achieve that task or address the issue in terms of the specific question? And R, how did you, choose, how did you have a positive result at the end of it? So as much as you can talk about the problem and what happened and how bad the situation was, don't forget to talk about the positive result that ended up happening in the story on a high note and just not a bad note, please. Okay, so situation, task, action, result. And this is how I would answer that question. I was once tasked with the responsibility to complete the regulatory risk assessment for the region for or, and coordinate the compliance officers within the EMEA region. The task was very challenging because at the time that this task needed to be done, it met and conflicted with some of the deadlines of the country compliance officers who were having regulatory inspections their deadlines competing with the deadline for completing the regional risk assessment were conflicting and it threatened my ability to meet my deadline for submitting the regional risk assessment. The action that I took in terms of resolving this was scheduling specific time um, that was suitable for the country compliance officers who, suit, who had the challenge to make sure that they were available and if it had to be after, hour, after hours, it had to be after hours, but the goal was to get the work done. And ultimately, by changing my schedule to accommodate the schedule of the country compliance officers that had a challenge who I was able to get the inputs that were required to get the risk assessment completed and ultimately we were able to meet the deadline for the overall regional risk assessment with the contribution of the necessary stakeholders. 
It was a challenging time, but I was willing and able, luckily at the time, to coordinate things with such to such an extent that it managed multiple stakeholders competing um, obligations and priorities and met the timelines that we needed to achieve. So you see, it's really about, this is the situation, this was the challenge, this were the actions, the specific actions that I took, and this is the result that was achieved. So it's basically an ability to tell the story and make sure that you're relaying <clears throat> a positive outcome, an actual situation related to your, your role and responsibilities that you were given and how you managed to achieve that. So it shows that I took responsibility for an, an important task, I noticed the problem and took action to resolve the problem and I achieved the desired outcome. So there you have it. Okay, I hope those three questions have given you some food for thought in terms of how you can think about interview questions in the compliance space. Um, there are a lot more questions that you know could potentially be asked in an interview. I have a guide, the compliance interview guide with top 10 questions that's available at the online store if you would like to purchase that and see some of the other questions and tips that I provide in terms of answering those. And if you want to take it a next a step further than that, you can book an interview preparation uh, session with myself. All the information relating to this and the online store will be, the links to those will be in the description. So you can click on that and, you know, get as much information as you need. But like I said earlier on, remember, you are a great candidate for the role. It's really just about getting your thoughts together about how you can answer this question in a smart, thoughtful way that presents you in the best possible light. Remember, they need you as much as you want this job. With that being said, thank you so much for watching my video. Please do send your comments. Ask me more questions in the comments below. If you've got a unique interview question that you think I can help you answer, then please pop that into the, the, the comment section. I'd be happy to give you some tips and you know share my thoughts um, in, in my response to you in the comments. But until next time, everybody, happy interviewing and good luck getting that job. Bye.